government, and MTN, Orange Liberia, and Telco. And last week, Thursday in the morning, the cable experienced an outage. An outage that I would say for better the internet. And this was about 4 46 a.m. So we all woke up to no internet, no WhatsApp, and what have you in the data space. Two, three hours after that, we learned that the cable cord was somewhere between Dakar and Abidjan. But because it's a wide area, it took some time to locate where the cable cut came from because there were a lot of speculations. And when we did identify that it was closer to Abidjan, what next we noticed and observed based on reports that it was not only the ACE cable system, which Liberia is a part of, but four other cable systems were also cut had a cable break. So that even multiply our problem. Because normally when there's one, then we rely on each other to see how we can do about the traffic. But when you have four, SAT three, main one cable, ACE cable, and MTN wax cable, all four went down, affecting over 15 countries. On the A cable, nine countries got affected because nine countries were members of ACE and Liberia happened to be one of the nine countries. Liberia had a partnership with A cable and the operator that operates the cable is called the Cable Consortium of Liberia. This cable has been in existence since 2010. Since 2010 to today, we have had three of such incidents. Another information is that Liberia, Sierra Leone, Guinea, and Gambia are the countries that only have one cable system in their country. And that poses a challenge for these countries especially us in Liberia. But we have managed over the years since this cable came live to find different ways of rerouting and redirecting the traffic when it happens. Unfortunately, this time around, when four cables were out, it was hard and we had to go through a war room type of situation to address the issue. Yes, it is a national security issue. Is a national security issue not for Liberia, for all the countries that were involved. About six, seven o'clock, we then decided that the best way to do this is to do a multi pronged approach. Have the people that can retain the cable kind of start working on the cable, at the same time, try to redirect the traffic that was on each country. And redirecting the traffic meant that we were not using 100% of each person's network. Liberia normally would go to Ivory Coast and get on an express bus and go around the world. We couldn't go to Ivory Coast anymore. So we resorted to go from Liberia to Freetown, hoping that we get enough capacity and facilities to go from Freetown to Guinea, hoping that we get enough capacity and facilities to go from Guinea to Gambia and then to Dakar before we were able to go around the world. As we speak now, we have about 40% of our capacity restored. That's not a good number because I've noticed that some people are still having problems with slow network, not full WhatsApp conversation, but we're working on it. It's not only Liberia, so we had to 
everybody had to be given a portion of their facility to make sure we bring back their country's land into the waters. They might be somewhere else, but we have to negotiate and get them there. And once they are there and the work has started, it takes another four to five weeks to complete their work. So what we are carefully doing in the interim is to ensure that whatever cable we have now with the limited capacity that we are guiding it with everything we talks about the need for so social improvement uh, in project management. And Mr. Boyu, that falls on your lap directly, you and your team, why we will now provide the appropriate oversight uh, in ensuring that we pass the pressure on the consultants and maybe the contractors if it allows, if the deals allow us to directly interact with the contractors. One of the major things which is even more worrisome for me is the fact that we are getting in the rainy season and if I got Ibarra reports right, up to now we've not made the input or the requisition for the pipes and the fitting. And maybe the design that will be coming has to be manufactured from scratch. We don't know. Only the contractors will tell us that. And if that is the case, then we we are in for some serious trouble. Site meetings also, I don't think site meetings should just be there to, for people to go talk and then afterward we don't have any action. At each of those site meetings we should have action points and there should be people responsible to ensure that those action points are implemented and reported on in the following site meeting. We need to make sure that these things are needed. They are not replaced by someone from me. In working with the different actors assigned there. All of those issues that are inconsistent with the law created in Mika. Our new administration is thinking, how can we use them? Uh, we talk to Madonna and the team so that we... in 2017, I gave the time to the distinguished guest to speak. In 2017, the head of the Executive Protection Service recommended to President Selly. At that time, they were working on the Transitional Act. To include in that act the question as to how our former leaders are protected. Those of you in the media are aware that the Transitional Act did not go through. So there's no more compelling people to do what they ought to do to protect former president. Notwithstanding, it is just that you will do something to ensure that your former leaders are safe. So it's on account of that, former leaders, particularly since President Selly Gibbons was the first former president, do have officers of the executive protection service announced, I mean, not, I mean, sorry, assigned to them. When President Sally became former president, the government assigned 15 EPS officers. Eight of the EPS officers walked away on their own. So she was left with seven. Former Vice President Waka had 12 EPS officers assigned. Three were withdrawn by the government. They did not walk away. Currently, the EPS chose to assign 15 EPF, EPS personnel to former President Weir. The former president rejected eight of the officers on grounds that he does not know them. But he also made a request that he leaves 38 officers to be assigned to. The head of the EPS has indicated to that they will not assign 38 EPS officers to the former president. The assignment of EPS officers to 
individuals is at the discretion of the president of the Republic of Nigeria. It is a presidential unit. That's the reason why they wanted to make it legal by ensuring that it was reflected in the transitional act, which did not, did not go through. So that presidential discretion, which is embedded in common sense, is being used to ensure that our former leaders are protected. And the government's commitment to ensure that not just President we are President Sennis, and other officials of government who the President deemed uh, necessary to bring the EPS officer will continue, will continue to do so. But let me caution us. We politicize everything in this country. National security issue, our foreign relations, everything we try to politicize. I am pleading with all of us to please do not politicize issues that are associated with our security sector. The EPS has grown in size. Right now, there is an investigation that is ongoing. A total evaluation of the hiring processes in the past. Because there are qualification benchmarks for individuals who should serve in the EPS. It has been noticed that some of those benchmarks were not met, and therefore we have individuals who are serving as EPS officers that are not qualified. The administration, the EPS leadership, is determined and prepared to correct that. And in the midst of that, when they assign security personnel to you, you cannot make a choice as to who you want, rejecting officers. These are people who should be independent, purely security people. Okay, good morning, Liberia. Good morning, Monrovia. Good morning, Cock City. Good morning, Banga City, Bon County. Good morning, Tottenberg, uh, Bomi County. Greenville, Sano County. Robert's Port, uh, Grand Cape Mount County. San Colin, Nimba County. Buon German, uh, Lofa County, the home of the president. Good morning, wherever you are and whatever you are doing, if you're watching us from abroad, we'd like to say good morning and welcome. This is the Today Show right here on your favorite dial, uh, Spoon 107.5 FM, and we're also live on Fabric 101.1 FM. We are as well coming to you on our various uh, social media handles, Spawn TV Live, Fabric TV Live, and the, our YouTube channel as well. So good morning, wherever you are and whatever you are doing. Welcome to it. My name is Yekezi Zobel. Uh, pretty seated here this morning again to drive you through alongside my colleague, Manuel David. So let's have a wonderful, wonderful time together. If you are celebrating a special day in your life today, I'd like to say congratulations. Those of you celebrating your birthday today, happy, happy birthday. Uh, those of you who celebrated your birthday on yesterday, like my brother and sister, Christian Zubel and Chaseto Zube. Did celebrate their birth anniversary yesterday alongside my little niece, little Grace Zubel. A happy belated birthday. So, yeah, folks, uh, is is uh, the 19th day of the month of March, and of course, uh, gradually we are we are coming to the end 
of this month and gradually the year is uh going to an end so i know uh, many of you at the end of the year you make resolutions you say at the end of uh, the new year i want to accomplish this i want to achieve this i want to achieve that but some of you will wait and wait and wait and you know procrastinate at the dial minute uh, then you want to try to fast track working towards your goal and sometimes it becomes impossible so uh it's about time that you start working on your goals for this year your resolution for this year because gradually gradually this year is uh going to an end so let me say good morning to emmanuel david emmanuel how are you well i'm fine uh thank god for life uh thank god for the air that we breathe thank god for his assisting as god to us well because without him we wouldn't have been here so i like to appreciate god almighty and you said something uh i'm like laughing the resolution mm. uh, uh to us, uh, you know at the beginning of this year there were lots of people who paint down things say oh, i will do this i will do that and you know time is of essence time flies time waits for no man time is the most expensive commodity ever you cannot buy time you can buy the bugatti you can buy the what you cannot buy time so i think it is good to work uh while you have the necessary time and you you, you don't want to uh, procrastinate things and uh all of your dreams that or, or your resolution rather uh and you 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 have them not coming into fruition so you want to do the best uh, make the best of your time so uh it's it's a very good thing and uh, i'm i'm uh, i'm i'm actually working on couples of things uh, yes and i said i'm going to do at the, at the initial point of this year i don't know what, i don't know about you but for me i'm i'm actually pushing and and i and i hope and pray god be my helper you know yeah. all of these things if you, if you don't put god at the center of these things uh it is it is it is for nothing yeah so i uh, do i agree with you as yeah. a christian i do uh you know 100 percent agree with you yeah you you've got a plan because it's often said one who fails to plan plans to fail sure enough so if you don't plan uh of course you plan to fail, plan to fail. yeah so uh that is it here uh, this morning let me say good morning to all of you watching us live on spawn tv ben ben is uh watching us live uh from uh is it Sak sakoya sakoya I'm okay so it's Tupuro. ben ben sakoya ben sakoya from Tupuro. that means it's sequoia mm. ben sequoia uh says it's following from uh Tupuro. thanks for mm. following the show ben uh we junior alvin is uh following live from compass city yeah, yeah that's my, my city county. right there I yeah want, i want to see that i'm mean, a city i love you living <laughs> in the city you know i love <laughs> living <in Canada. laughs> so ben thanks for uh following the show uh gpa junior alvin thanks for following emmanuel l baker junior is also following from firestone okay mm -hmm. thanks for following from firestone emmanuel panto elijah uh, says good morning spawn tv thanks for following panto panto uh, happens to be one of our regular followers i yeah. think uh, a few days ago i saw him again following yeah but yeah keep on following uh, josephus lapo says good morning yeah because um josephus i'm watching from mount tokade yikepa nimba county yeah. have you been there before no you know yeah like, been there. Like yeah but you <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're thinking about lying eh? no, I get lying, but man, I get so lying, about you you get on private platform <laughs> Mommy, let's 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 go <laughs> let's get on public platform or you get on, on, on private platform yeah but that's it um auto cholo play okay says i think you for the show this morning i'm falling from river g county fish town city how how, how is uh fish town yeah comfort zaza is also following the show this morning uh asha wuluge is following from zueju uh grand jida county thanks for following uh the show fully somber it says good morning uh i'm watching from the bapas i think it's capital bapas yeah, thanks yeah. for following the show uh abraham t thomas is also following this morning from uh, johnsonville uptown thanks for following, following the show as well abraham abel nomade toway 
uh, is following the show from District 13, New Georgia. Thanks for following the show. Uh, James Koffer and the rest of you following the show this morning. We'd like to say good morning. Princess Wally is following the show and says good morning, my family. Fata Salo Walker is following from Bapalu County. As uh, Zika Down is following from Gumpa City, Nimba County. Uh, James Lakbo is following from, uh, uh, yeah, he says, yeah, okay, so he says his name is James Lakbo, CKA Gelebe. I think that's mm -hmm. just Gelebe. I think I, I pronounce it right, James. Just, just pause the comment section. I think I got this pronunciation right, James. James, uh, let me get it. Why, 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 why is it? Why is it? I, I want to go back to this post. Uh, uh yeah, James Lakbo, Gelegbe. I think that's it. Watch it from Senate College City, <laughs> you, you, uh, if, 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 if you don't pronounce this, uh, uh this name well, I will why? Have issue with why you. they get a lot of better name that you can pronounce well. You. I mean, I'm... <laughs> hey, they got a lot of better name that you can pronounce well. But I pronounce it by 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 by, by this is, name this is, well. This is your, Gelebe, your Gelebe. direct name, and, and, you, and you know, and you know, you know how how to turn twist when it comes to uh, speaking to you. So okay, they, they should be an issue for you. Gelebe, that man in yeah, man in yeah, well, all of your for the funny regional. So. Okay, all right. So, uh, folks, that's it. Good, good morning and welcome. Good morning and welcome to all of you. I'm sorry we wouldn't be able to call all of the names because there are a lot of comments coming in. Uh, but we try our best to pin your uh, various comments on the screen. Uh, Vani, uh, many Baka Kamara following from uh, um, um, uh, the USA. Thanks for following this morning. Robert Gono is also following uh, from Nimba. Uh, Dafia Moba is uh, also following from Gaza community. Thanks. Uh, we try to pin all of your comments on the screen this morning. So, folks, there are a lot of happenings in the country uh, that we will be delving into uh, this morning. The President of the Republic of Liberia, you know, issued executive order exempting, you know, customs duties uh, from certain items imported into the country by the Liberia Water and Seawall Corporation. And this, according to the order, is intended to make, um, 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 you know, the provision of water very affordable and accessible mm. in the country. And I think that's a good news. Yes, what is um, we hope to speak with uh, Mo Ali to tell us the importance of this um, executive order because he's the managing director there uh, at the Liberia Water and Seawall corporation and there are a lot of other issues happening in the country um the foreign minister mm -hmm. sarah beslo you know has uh, ordered all those possessing diplomatic passports to return them mm -hmm. to return them and if the deadline elapses and you don't return your diplomatic passport it's going to be considered as what expired Expired passport. Yeah, it's going to be considered as expired. And the U.S. Embassy has commended her for that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, decision. Um, because this borders on our security. This sure also enough. borders on respect for the passport. our passport. So, sure um, right after she, you know, made that, announced the decision yesterday at Minka's uh, regular press briefing, uh, you know, she was commended. Uh, via the Facebook page of the U.S. Embassy uh, near Manovia. Uh, so yes, uh, that's that's that that's a good uh, decision a made. Yeah, we sure. we we delve into that a little bit uh, later on the show. And talking about Mika's press briefing, uh, I, during the, the regime of President George Weah, it was every Thursday. But the new regime, the new information minister, has said that. Um, they are going to be briefing the press every Tuesday and Thursday. Every Tuesday and Thursday, they will be briefing the press now instead of just on Thursday. And I think that that was good. He also said that because uh, uh, Minket had a, a program 
uh, it has a program on uh, ELBC. Yeah, uh, it's still broadcaster. It, yeah, so on Friday. It's, it's called uh, Minket's Half Hour. So mm -hmm. he said it's now going to be extended to an hour. So it's going to be called Minket Hour. Okay. Yeah, so uh, there were a lot of things said. He also addresses the issue of uh, the president's request for EPS officers. The former president. The former president. Yeah. Uh, request for EPS officers to be assigned to him. You know, it was all circulating on social media that you know the president requested twenty-five EPS officers, and people were like, "Hey, hey, it's just too, it's too much." But little did we know that the number was even higher than what it was than it what was, was, was circulating on social media. So, according to um, the information minister Gerald Limbeck, PI yesterday at uh, Mika's press briefing the president requested for 38 hmm. 338 eps officer 38 eps officers according to uh the information minister president george we are requested four to be assigned with him for what reason to protect him but i just think that's too much of uh an, an eps uh, officer to be with him too much, too much, too much. But we'll also talk more and more about that because um, the information minister went on to say that, you know, uh, when former president Shalif left office, 15 EPS officers were, were assigned with her. Uh, but then I think certain number, I think he said uh, either eight or seven of them mm, left, left, you know, went away on their own. Uh, and so when uh, and two of EPS officers were assigned with the former vice president, who is now president yeah. of the Republic of Liberia. But when he was former vice president, two of EPS officers were assigned with him. Um, but then the government of uh, President George Weah decided to withdraw two, in fact, three of those two of EPS officers. Mm -hmm. So now the former vice president wa uh, was uh, left with with how many EPS officers? So he got nine. Nine EPS officers he was left with. And then uh, President George Weah, according to him, you know, um, was assigned with 15 EPS officers after he left office. 15 EPS officers. And then he, you know, rejected eight of those EPS officers, according to the information minister, uh, because he said he doesn't know them. Yeah, he doesn't, uh, know, he them. doesn't know them. Doesn't trust them. Can confide in them. He can work with them. So he rejected eight of them. So that is currently the president is assigned with seven mm -hmm. EPS officers, but now he's requesting more. He's, he's requesting thirty-eight EPS officer. Which I think is is going to be uh, uh, on 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 presidented yeah, if it sure. happens, uh, but it's not going to happen according to the information minister because he said he spoke it with uh, the folks from uh, the EPS, the EPS director, and he said that that wouldn't be possible. Mm -hmm. But we talk more about that. Yes, the certainly. legal aspect. Because there is this debate surrounding yeah, it, whether it, to assign is to assign, you know, EPS officer. Some some supporters of the president are saying that you know it is um, the right of the president to request for you know EPS officer, and there are some legal backings towards that. We will look at all of that, mm -hmm. uh, even though I don't know about any legal backing um, about, about assigning EPS officers to the president. Um, I want to know about the Joint um, Transition Act. You know, uh, that act has not yet been acted, so it's not yet a law. Mm. And that act will make it compulsory for a certain number of EPS officers to be assigned to, to the president. Former, president former president in the country. Yeah. But that act is not yet a law. It's still a bill. It's yet a proposal. All right? Uh, but besides that, um, the EPS... Um, 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 act itself, you know, it says the president can assign uh, EPS officers at his discretion to any individual, dignitary, even me, yeah, the president was uh, 
EPS, so maybe if you can follow the show every morning, yeah. uh, and he knows that I can come here very early because I, be come, I, I come here before seven. Mm. Yeah, I come here before seven. Maybe the president will say, maybe you can see you take a risk to come, you know, here very early. So I want to sign one or two EPS officers with, with you. Serene. That with Serene, no problem. <laughs> that would be okay. That would be okay. And that also happened under the regime of former president George Weir. Uh, you know, where, you know, he assigned EPS officers to, you know, individuals that he wished. And guess what? I want a president we are regime. I saw EPS officers play the places. Oh, I went in club and all oh, I used to see and, EPS and, officers. And, 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 and I saw EPS officer. Uh, the president at, wasn't at, there, but EP, EPS at officers. At the resident of uh, Seward Bridge. Uh, he was, I think, the deputy for, upper, um, for operations, something like that, in the EPS. He lived yeah. in, in Dupont Road. Uh, yeah. This is his schools of EPS officer at his resident. Yeah. And besides, this thing has been greeted with mixed reactions. Uh, we, we are seeing people. And one thing I picked from uh, uh, Jeremy Pia, uh, he said, this shouldn't be politicized. This is a security issue. And if if, if you don't understand, I think it's better you get a, a better understanding of it before you even think about talking about it so you don't want to politicize this this particular issue so folks folks they need to take it easy especially the guys from the angle of the cdc and i saw the the secretary general of the cdc making some strong statement as it relates to this thing you know it is it is it is it is it is a time prudent enough we take our time as we approach things we yes. shouldn't we shouldn't politicize everything this country has has become politically driven to People want to eat politicize eating. Eating. How you eat, people want to politicize it. Yeah. So I don't think it, it is it is the real way to proceed. We have to take it easy because the saying goes, easier does it. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So um <laughs> that is it. Uh, we're going to touch on all of these issues uh later on in the show. But uh, firstly, uh let's bring you the weather forecast. What's the outlook of the weather today? The really game, game uh, uh Monrovia. Okay, we will do that right after yeah. uh, the weather forecast. So today's scattered thunderstorms are anticipated here. Scattered thunderstorms are anticipated in Monrovia, and uh, this for forecast is only for Monrovia, please. And the chance of precipitation is high. However, the rainfall will be light, and the highest daytime temperature will reach a tropical thirty degrees Celsius and eighty-six degrees Fahrenheit creating a slight contrast with the forecasted nighttime low of a moderately hot 25 degree Celsius. And the sun rose this morning at uh, 647, and the sun will set later this evening at 653, and the daylight will last for 12 hours and 7 minutes. All right, let's uh, quickly go to the central bank of Liberia to bring you the exchange rates. Uh, the latest exchange rates on the Central Bank of Liberia's website. Okay, it says uh, these are indicative rates based on results of daily surveys of foreign exchange markets in Monrovia and selected cities in Liberia. These rates are collected from the Central Bank, Commercial Bank's Parallel Market, and the Licensed Forex Bureau. The rates are not set by the Central Bank of Liberia. All right, so uh, the buy rate, according to the central bank, is 191 Liberian dollars to uh, 1 USD. And the selling rate is 193 Liberian dollars to uh, 1 USD. And let's bring you this quick information. Uh, we said we're going to do it, our, make it our business to always uh, announce this because um the time is coming closer the time is drawing nearer today is the 19 and we have uh let's mm -hmm. say approximately 12 more days for the expiration uh, of the money the expiration um of uh the series one and two of the liberian dollar banknotes so let's bring you this information it says the central bank of liberia cbl hereby noti notifies the public that after march 31 2024 the old Liberian dollar banknotes will no longer be legal tender. Mm -hmm. The public is therefore advised to have all its old Liberian dollar banknotes exchanged at any commercial bank or regulated financial institution for newly printed banknotes. After the March 31, 2024 deadline, 
the old Liberian dollar bank note series may be exchanged only at uh, CBL's head office in cash hops across the country. No commercial banks, other regulated financial institutions or businesses shall be allowed to exchange the LS1 and LS2 banknotes. The public is urged to kindly take note and act accordingly as no commercial banks, other regulated financial institutions or businesses shall be allowed to exchange the LS1 and LS2 banknotes after this deadline. Mm. <coughs> and usually I want to give a description of the banknote that's uh, considered um, expired. So uh, if you take the banknote, you want to face it at the front where you get the you know, um, picture of the president, all right? And you look in the upper right corner, you know, where you got, if that's a five Liberian dollar banknote, where you have the five spelled out, F-I-V-E, right on top of it, you got a date, the bank, the bank note was uh, released, mm -hmm. all right? So all of the bank notes printed before 2021, are the ones subjected to expiration. All of the bank notes printed before 2021 are the ones subjected to expirations, uh, expiration on March 31. All right? So just look at the date. And if you have many of those bank notes that were printed before 2021, then of course you need to go to the various central bank, uh, sorry, the various commercial banks in the country, you know, to exchange them, to avoid embarrassment or some kind of uh, too much bureaucracy in exchanging them after the expiration of, uh, you know, the LS1 and LS2 banknotes. Okay, folks, uh, um, that's it. Uh, anything you want to add onto, it, on, onto that? No, not, not, not much. You, you, you further. Uh... Okay. All right. So, folks, uh, that's it. Now, Let's go straight into it this morning. No waste of time. We we will cut across Liberia later also, on. But, also, we uh, know, uh, Moses Carter. Yes. I, I, I want to speak to Moses Carter here this morning, but uh, let's discuss this issue of uh, the um, EPS officers uh, requested by the president. Let's first listen to the reaction um, of the information minister, Jerry Limick, here. Um, towards the president's request for 38 instead of mm -hmm. the 25 that has been circulated, 38 EPS officers to be assigned with him. Uh, let's see whether we can um, play this for you. During the first administration, some of them were replaced and not replaced by someone from the with working with the different actors involved to solve them. There are places where, as the laws of the Executive Protection Service, they have been trending in the media as they follow. Let me comment on something that has been trending in the media as the final talking point before I gave the time to the distinguished guest to speak. In 2017, the head of the Executive Protection Service recommended to President Selly, at that time they were working on the Transitional Act, to include in that act the question as to how our former leaders are protected. Those of you in the media are aware that the Transitional Act did not go through. So there's no law compelling people to do what they ought to do to protect former president. Notwithstanding, it is just that you will do something to ensure that your former leaders are safe. So it's on account of that former leaders, particularly since President Selling Village was the first former president, do have officers of the executive protection service and now I mean not, I mean, sorry, assigned to them. When President Sally became former president, the government assigned 15 EPS officers. 
eight of the EPS officers walked away on their own. So she was left with seven. Former Vice President Waka had 12 EPS officers assigned. Three were withdrawn by the government. They did not walk away. Currently, the EPS chose to assign 15 EPF, EPS personnel to former President Weir. The former president rejected eight of the officers on grounds that he does not know them. But he also made a request that he leaves 38 officers to be assigned to him. The head of the EPS has indicated to that they will not assign 38 EPS officers to the former president. The assignment of EPS officers to individuals is at the discretion of the President of the Republic of Nigeria. It is a presidential unit. That's the reason why they wanted to make it legal by ensuring that it was reflected in the transitional act, which did not, did not go through. So that presidential discretion, which is embedded in common sense, is being used to ensure that our former leaders are protected. And the government's commitment to ensure that not just President Weir, President Sadiq, and other officials of government who the president deems uh, necessary to grant to an EPS officer will continue, will continue to do so. But let me caution us. We politicize everything in this country. National security issue, our foreign relations, everything we try to politicize. I am pleading for all of us to please do not politicize issues that are associated with our security sector. The EPS has grown in size. Right now, there is an investigation that is ongoing, a total evaluation of the hiring processes in the past, because there are qualification benchmarks for individuals who should serve in the EPS. It has been noticed that some of those benchmarks were not met, and therefore we have individuals who are serving as EPS officers that are not qualified. The administration, the EPS leadership, is determined and prepared to correct that. And in the midst of that, when they assign security personnel to you, you cannot make a choice as to who you want, rejecting officers. These are people who should be independent. Purely Okay, so uh, that's it. That's it. That's the response there from, uh, you know, the Minister of Information, um, the man clothed with the responsibility to disseminate uh, information um, in the country. So he had said it all. Um, 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 Imad, first, there was, 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 was your take. He said... Um, uh, let's 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 begin with uh, President President Salif. Um, when President Salif uh, became former president, she was assigned fifteen security uh, EPS officers. Mm -hmm. All right, and um, of that number, eight walked away on their own. All right, and she was left with seven. Now. Um, the current president as former vice president was assigned two of, uh, two of security officers, EPS officers. And um, the government of President uh, 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 George Weir decided to withdraw three of those officers. Two of, so the president, the former pres vice president, now president of the country, was left with how many? Nine mm -hmm. EPS officers. Former President George Weir, when, you know, uh, he became former president, he was assigned 15 EPS officers at the discretion of the current president, Joseph Yumabwaka. And the former president rejected eight of those officers on grounds that he doesn't know them. He doesn't trust them. He doesn't confide in them to provide him with security.
but this is the same former president who's requesting um 38, 38, 38 EPS, officers. EPS officers to be assigned with him. A number which I think is just a number to be assigned with a former um, president. Because even the great United States of America, I don't think they assign that number of, you know, um, sec uh, 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 secret uh, uh, um, service security with, uh, you know, uh, the former president. I don't think uh, Barack Obama is assigned uh, um, with, you know, a, a 30 or 38 um, EPS or uh, secret service uh, 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 officers. No. So I think the number, the number, the number is just is 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 just uh, too many. But the question is, why is President George Weah, former President George Weah, requesting for, you know, the high number of EPS uh, officers? Is it that his his life is is at risk? Mm -hmm. You know, after the presidency. I mean, we've so far not heard about any kind of attack on the president, at his residence. On the former president. On, on the former president. Um, no attack at his residence. Um, I mean, no, no, form of, no form of attack, even um, uh, uh, on any of his, you know, uh, uh, close confidants, some government officials. You know, no, no form of attack. So... Why should the president be requesting for, you know, uh, such huge number of EPS officers to be assigned to him? Why? That's the question. And I think uh, that's a very good question to ask, and uh, that answer that that question needs an answer. And uh i was following uh jeremy the pia when he was speaking and there are key things i capture when he was speaking uh that the eps is is a presidential unit and it is at the president description to uh assign epa officer i think in in consultation with the epa boss i think that is that is how it goes and uh in, in previous time, we, we uh, as he said on record, that former President Sadiq had 15 uh, EPL officers assigned. Joseph Walker, former, uh, then Vice President, had 12. I think that, that, that has been uh, the way in which they taught how to do uh, what they were doing. And now, no, so so that 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 the, uh, 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 the, the assigning of those EPS officers, it was that was at the discretion of President we are there said. as president of the country. All right, it's, so, it's not a fixed way, or so now, it's not there the, is, the numbers there, are there, not fixed. Yeah, yeah, that's why I said mm. that's how they thought of doing it. So uh you 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 have president, we are requesting for some how numbers of EPS officers it raise some concern and uh, it needs to be looked into what is the reason you want such a high number. Uh, as you said, if there is some security threat against his life, there is there, there is something that he's, he's supposed to uh, tell them. Perhaps this is due to SYC reason I want SYC amount. But I think on the overall, uh, the issue of making some more thing out of a very big thing. I'm not saying this is a very small matter, but time in memorial, we, we, we have we, we have taken things to a political level. And I'll even listen to uh, uh, Secretary General Jefferson Kuchi. I'm very I'm very I'm very keen about what I'm about I'm about to say. Okay, so talking about Jefferson Koji, because I already have uh, yes. I, I, I thought that we you know uh, talk talk about this. I already have a. Uh, uh his uh, facebook post yeah you can just read it for um, us you know uh in in reaction to the president's request mm -hmm. and this is what he said he said president george we are asked for 25 eps personnel at that time that was a that was the information yeah. circulating social media that the president asked for 25 eps personnel but if i'm reading directly from jefferson koji's post 
But if you cannot provide him that or anything that falls short of that number, we can assure you we will protect him ourselves. Remember also now, the day we come to the conclusion of protecting President Weir, you can rest assured you won't go to work. Mm. That's a threat right there. Um, so he said, remember also now, the day we come to the conclusion of protecting President Weir, you can rest assured you won't go to work. That is, the current president will not go to work. Yes. We will Very call true. for a national protection day for the president, for President Weir. And on that day, Mr. Boaka, you will work from home and not the executive mansion. Chair to the presidency. According to Jefferson Koji. Don't push us. Don't push us for we have what it takes to make you uncomfortable. Go and do the people's job. We won't pretend to you. We don't seek popularity. We are action-oriented characters. We will ask the citizens to join in protecting President We are any attempt. And the day we come to, to, to protect President We are, we won't leave again. We will protect him till the day we feel com comfortable that he's well protected. Except from the announcement of, uh, yeah. I think so, so, okay, so I, I think th this, this was a post, and he said it's excerpts from the announcement of uh, the party chairman, Janga Ko, as the new chairman of our CDC. So he's telling us that uh, what he posted uh, were, were were excepts from Janga's co but Janga you, 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 you remember yesterday? That, that, you, that is what you play, said. Yesterday you play you play an excerpt uh, uh, about uh, talking about Jefferson Koji's statement, and what you just read was the exact thing he said. Yeah, so I mean, for the fact that he can post that, it shows that he is supportive of that. For the fact that. Um, according to him, those are, uh, are accepts from the CDC new chairman's statement. Then it tells you that, you know, uh, it's something that has been agreed upon or it's something that uh, supporters of the CDC or partisans of the CDC, you know, are uh, supportive of. And I think this is where um, the Minister of Information was coming from, mm -hmm. um, um, talking about individuals. Uh, trying to politicize this whole issue of the president's request for EPS officers and blah, 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 blah. So I think uh, it, 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 it's, uh, for me, I feel it is from this angle that, you know, um, the politicizing of this request is uh, coming even, from. Even, even, even in the public space, these have been greeted with mixed reaction, especially uh, the, the huge number of those who support President George Weir. And mm. I, I, I think we shouldn't be going this way. Mm. This is this is something that needs to be dialogue. If 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 there is more importance attached to it, the those who are clothed with the responsibility of spearheading the affairs of the EPS can handle this. But Jefferson Koji come up with such a statement, I think is scary, and we need to condemn it from this angle of the media. We need to condemn yeah. it. We um, need condemnation. And the, and one thing is that Je Jefferson Koji is not an, an ordinary man. He was he's former not. He's uh, not. mayor in the previous government. He's, he's uh, the secretary general of uh, the CDC. This is a man who has been sanctioned by the United States of America for human rights abuse. You know what it takes to abuse human rights? Somebody who has the capability and competence to abuse the rights of human being, it means that person must you know uh possess some huge influence mm -hmm. you know uh to do that so he's not just an ordinary person coming up so if he's just coming up and making you know a reckless statement uh threatening the presidency of the country i think um just, the national security has to pull him over for questioning just think about just think about yeah, president think president Parker going to work and folks from the cdc headed by jefferson Kuti trying to prevent them yeah prevent them just think about that you 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 just you, think about you it you can remember on um, the regime of former president uh george weir i think 
Um, I can't vividly remember the statement, but it was a statement that was made by now Senator of Montserrat County, um, Darius Diller, where he said he's going to stone um, uh, the president's vehicle. He made a statement mm -hmm. of, 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 uh, in, in, uh, of, of, of that faction. I can, you know, uh, vividly remember the statement. And mm -hmm. I can remember uh, he was pulled over. The national security requested that, you know, he comes for, for, for questioning. You know, so those are same reg uh, 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 similar re regular statements being made by um, Jefferson Koji. And I think mm. uh, the national security should take cue. Yeah. Should they, take cue they, of that. And one thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. In, in, I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to uh, bring to the understanding of people that Jefferson Koji is not an ordinary citizen now. He has huge following and he's influential. And per his position in the coalition for democratic change, the CDC rather, uh, he he is he is an he is an uh, influential guy that presides over the schools of youth. And making such a statement, it is in my mind, it is not playing well. I was just thinking about that's why I asked the question. Just think about President Barack is trying to go to work, and then you have folks preventing him and the security retaliating think about the scene just think about that scene you don't want jefferson Cody to make such a statement i think uh election is done with campaign is done with it's about time to build a nation mm. we should figure out ways how we can contribute positively to the nation and put aside our political differences to forge a hair. Trust me, this station is this not not this station. This nation is some way way behind. Things that other nations have passed by. These are things that we are still struggling with. Just just imagine the issue of electricity. Just imagine other things. What what are some of those contribution positive contribution you can bring on board yeah. instead of just politicize? You know, at times it hurts me. Yeah, you see. It seconds me at times when I, when, when I see influential people, people who we think should be in the right trajectory to breed the minds of young people positively, making such a statement. It, it, it bothers me as a very uh, as a young man coming up. Okay, so um, uh, that's 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 it, folks. Uh, the Minister of Information has said, uh, seriously, uh, the request of President. George, uh, we have for 38 EPS officers. Um, it's, it's, it's not going to be at here at all. Um, and I mean, um, the factor is the president of the country, you know, um, assigns EPS officers to an individual, you know, at his discretion. There's no law, no law for that matter. There's no an act, which mm -hmm. is a joint security act, which is not yet a law. Until that can be made a law, then of course it's going to be mandatory for uh, former presidents uh, to be assigned a certain number of EPS officers. But as of yet, it's not a law, and so uh, currently it is left with the president to assign EPS officers to individuals former president at his discretion. In consultation with the EPS boss, all right. So, mm -hmm. if uh, uh, the former president was assigned, you know, uh, fifteen security uh, EPS officers and he rejected it, well, I mean, uh, it's I think it's it's, it's just uh, left with him. But people should st should stop making it look like, you know, like the, the, the likes of Jefferson Koji and Jenga Ko, the CDC chairman, should stop making it look like, you know, it is. Uh, 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 in, in imperative that a president, the former president, or the current president provides EPS officer any number of EPS officers uh, requested by former president is imperative or mm -hmm. is uh, lawful that the current president provides that number of EPS officers. No, it is not a force, it is no legal bargain towards that, and you know, I'm surprised that a former president of our president will come to be, you know, uh, requesting for 38 EPS officers. When he when he was president, like a lot of people are saying right here in the comment section, you know, mm -hmm. when there was high level of insecurity 
high level of mysterious debts in this country. Um, um, I mean, the president told us that we should buy CCTV cameras. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He told us that we should try to buy CCTV cameras in our yeah. various homes. Uh, to, 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 so, so that we, 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 we should, he said specifically, we should be our own security. Yeah. We should be our own security and we should go ahead and buy CCTV cameras. You know, not taking into consideration the fact that, you know, a lot of Liberians are living below the poverty, the poverty line. A lot of, a majority of Liberians can't even afford to buy the CCTV camera that he's talking about. So if CCTV, uh, CCTV camera can serve as security, and you, especially, Mr. President, you I think you can afford to buy a CCTV camera. What now? You can't buy the CC, the, CC, the CCTV camera that you told us to buy before as ordinary citizens to be our own security. And now you're coming to request for 38 EPS officers. Hmm? Yes. Hmm. Um, I'm not in any way trying to say that former presidents of the country should not be protected. Mm -hmm. hmm? The need protection sure enough and that is why i'm in favor of that joint security act i hope they can you know um see the need to enact it expeditiously yeah. um so that there can be a law uh relative to you know the number of security officers eps officers that will be assigned to a past president Yes, but while there is no law, the current president, in his own wisdom, like he, uh, president, we are dead. The former president, Ellie Johnson Solif, assigned to her 15 uh, EPS security after she became uh, former president. And the same is just being reciprocated to you, Mr. President, but your demands are hard. And uh, it's being made to look like, you know, this is imperative. It must happen. And out of that, we just stop politicizing these kinds of things. Issues that have to do with our security. I think we should stop politicizing them. Now, um, moving fast forward. Um, the president, I... Uh, Joseph Boakai released a, uh, a, a statement, the executive mansion released a statement yesterday. And uh, it says President Boakai issues executive order number 127 exempting the LWSC from customs duties. It says President Joseph Yuma Boaka Sr. has issued an executive order to exempt the Liberia Water and Sea Water Corporation LWSC from paying customs duties on certain items. This is to ensure that clean and safe drinking water remain affordable and accessible to the public. The items exempted from customs duties include diesel fuel for operations and production, rotatable and uh, consumable space for operations, low lift and high lift pumps for use at the water treatment plants, water treatment chemicals, and uh, chlorinators and laboratory apparatus for water treatment facilities at White Plains Water Treatment Plant and Outstations. The Executive Order Number 127 was issued on Thursday, March 31, 2024. It also exempts heavy duty equipment such as water and seawater chocks, asphalt uh, cutters jack hammocks leak de uh, detectors uh, vibes that is air relief surge air relief surge in line uh presumed seawater cleaners high pressure assorted preps and uh, victim uh, flow and water meters heavy and light duty vehicles and generators from customs duty payment and this executive order takes over from the previous executive order that has since expired which served a similar, a similar purpose. So yeah, um, President George Weir has, um, sorry, <laughs> President Joseph Waka. You got President Joseph Waka has uh, <laughs> issued uh, an executive order 
you know, um, and this executive order number 127. And this executive order, I think is 100% uh, necessary. Mm. Um, is exempting the Liberia Water and Sea Wall Corporation from customs duties, which is very important. And the intention or the essence of this, um, according to the release, uh, is to you know make safe drinking water um, affordable and accessible to the public, and that is important. You know, sometimes when I sit and think about our country, you know how way, way, way back we are in terms of development mm. is, is too frustrating. You know, in, in Monrovia and its, you know, um, environs, imagine water and sea water uh, up to this time is not able to, uh, you know, provide water in Monrovia, in Central, in, in Monrovia, in Monrovia, water and sea water cannot supply. We, we don't we have the facility to do that yet in Monrovia and its environs. We can't do that at this time. Electricity, the problem. Water and seawall, the problem. And those are basic necessities of life. Basic necessities of life. In 2024, we are still struggling. They seem no way near to be resolved no way this is very very disheartening and i think this executive order um is going to help the uh mo ali and yeah. his team you know um yeah uh to do more is it's going to reduce the cost of water uh yeah i use water and see what because i already in congo town um yeah so it's, it's 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 gonna lower it's gonna we lower say, the cost we say joy because we once, community. yeah <laughs> once, once you have customs duties uh our tariff imposed on uh those uh, uh equipment that are coming to the country that mm. the water and sea water uh, uh is importing into the country of course um the water and sea water will have to increase mm. the price of you know uh water the cost of water you know to be able to um, 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 bridge that gap to be able to, you know, uh, run the effects of uh, the corporation. So I think that's 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 a, a good decision by the president of the Republic of Liberia. And I, I was hoping to speak with Mo Ali on on this. I talked to him this morning, but he did not reply. But um, I'll hope to talk to him uh, at a subsequent time um, about this. So tell us the importance of this. What how, how how beneficial is, is, is this to his institution, uh, the LSWC? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, it is it is it is it is an opportunity for the Liberal Water and Sewer Corporation, a dormant uh, agency that have been lying there uh, that should have been a revenue. Uh, uh, you know, gener generation or generating company uh, agency uh, to make you know water is life. Uh, you guess it to be real. Water is life, and having water and sewer in this country, and there are lots of people in, even in Central Monrovia that do not have access to safe drinking water. I think it, it, it means a lot, and uh, this should serve as an opportunity to make it more. Yeah, uh, affordable for Liberians uh, across the the capital for now. Uh, as you said, you 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 have water and sewer in your area for where I live. Uh, we don't have that. We still draw water for hand pumps. So mm -hmm. I think uh, there are more people who want the service who are willing to pay. But the water and sewer, I get my area that good water and sewer. It it goes on so that one more again, can. That's Two weeks. Saying. Okay, so LEC better than water and sewer. <laughs> uh, LEC, yeah, LEC, uh, is way it, better it, it than is, water and sewer. It is. It is. It is. It is. LEC, LEC agency go, line can go two days, three days. It will come. But now water and sewer. Uh, water and sewer goes, my brother. <laughs> I mean, you have to fetch water for nearby so, uh, wells well, This is pump. this is an opportunity yeah. for them. This is an opportunity for them to make the best use use of it, so that Liberia across Montserrado County can have. 
access to safe drinking water and in time to come uh water work can stretch it hence other places in rural counties to have people having access to safe drinking water because remember water is life uh, yeah, sure. uh, good water is good health so we we, we look forward to uh the water and sewer management making uh, the necessary use of the opportunity that have been given by the president and and and, and have uh, water supply across the country so we are keeping our eyes open kudos to the president for a wise decision uh and that is it yeah so uh that, that that's it uh, now i we talked about an issue here was it last week was it when 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 when, when was it this issue about uh, of this yeah, about the beating of the woman yeah they, it was they, last week last week yeah. Uh, uh, yeah i i can't remember the it exact was last day week. It was last but week. then you know so um in in chocolate city mm -hmm. in chocolate city this old woman disabled was um, there was video footage all over social media in which we we saw people accusing her of being a witch. Mm -hmm. All right. So they accused the old man to say the old man a witch. And at the end of the day, they flogged her unmercifully. They flogged her inhumanly. And, and when they flogged her and she uh, probably went off, um, some of them who uh, were flogging the old man just thought that she's she's dead. Yeah, that was a thought, and so it was all on social media that oh, they flogged the old man, the old man died. But later in the evening, um, we got to know that the old man didn't die. She didn't die. There was a good Samaritan who came in. This lady, um, and you know, took the old man to hospital. And other folks from the United States of America even pledged, you know, to pay the old man hospital bill and everything. All right. And that was done. She was at the ERW hospital, ongoing treatment. And it's, it's something that we discuss here and we condemn the action of uh, those who flocked the old man, accusing her of being a witch because they don't have any you know, evidence that Omar is a witch. And even if they had evidence that Omar is a witch, they didn't have the right to beat her or to flog her for any reason. Because if you flog the Omar, it will not take out the witchcraft from in her. Mm -hmm. Beating will not take out the witchcraft from in her. Mm -hmm. I think when you grab witchcraft, uh, a witch, what you need to do is to do what? You, you, you it, pray. It, uh, yeah, you pray. We, we as Christians. You use Holy Ghost fire. You know? Or you call pastor. You say, oh, Pastor, we get one oh my yeah, she's looking at witch. Uh, and we uh she witch, uh, like uh, other people claim, uh, and we want you pray for her. But beating her will not what difference will it make? No. And the old man that you're accusing of being a witch, the old man, yeah, she's not eating her yachtery. Mm -hmm. And now the old man making some of your bro bro. You don't try to go in America. Yeah. And now the old man making some more not try to go in America. Yeah. Or oh, you know the old man make his money and not get a job in nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. You don't get any evidence about that. But you just grab the old man, your accuser of being a witch, and then you're unmercifully flog her. Unmercifully. As though she's done something to your in your claim. They just claim the old man is a witch. She was she she was flying, and you know, and then you know, she landed. Maybe <laughs> uh I don't know her gas finny or a few, whatever it finished. Uh, and then, you know, she was forced to lay in Chocolate City. But that was not the fact. Um, the old man was reported dead um, some part of last week. So she died at the hospital. She did not um, respond to treatment, hmm. falling out flogging. She died at the hospital and i'm trying to place a call because the most important thing is for an investigation to be carried out mm -hmm. to bring um the, the perpetrators of a flogging to book hmm? there's a need and i've not heard the police talk anything about this i've not seen a statement from the police about this 
and it happened since last week. And Oman died um, over the uh, over the weekend. And I have not seen any statement from the Liberian National Police in terms of re- relative to that. In, yeah, in terms of uh, arresting, you know, uh, suspects mm-hmm. uh, and carrying out investigations. So I want to speak to Moses Carter here, who's a spokesperson of the Liberian National Police, um, to hear from him whether the police is doing anything about carrying out an investigation uh, before we can go further into, you know, um, the death of the Oma. We understand the name of the Oma is Mamblo. She's from Grand Cru, Mamblo. Yeah. She's, she, she, she's from Grand Crew. Yeah, she's from the former president's county. Hello, Mr. Mr. Carter. This is Yekezi. You live on the Today Show on Spoon FM. Yekezi, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Okay. So, um, I, we, th- 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 there was this, you know, social media video that accused an old woman of being a witch. And uh, we saw people in that video, uh, she, she was being, I mean, uh, she was allegedly flocked. I did not watch the portion of the video where, you know, she was being flocked. Uh, but it was alleged that she was flocked. And uh, uh, later on, some good Samaritan came over and took her to uh, the hospital. And we are understanding that um, she died. She did not respond to treatment following that uh, flogging. Um, but since then, we've we've not heard any, you know, information from the police about that. Any statement about investigation? Does the police know about this incident? Well, the police uh, take uh, due cognizance of the barbaric incident that occurred, which led to the death of one of uh, our citizens. And so, uh, the investigative team, the Inspector General, has constituted uh, a team to expedite investigations and to be able to release a uh, report to the public in the soonest possible time on the issue of arrest. Um, so what we are going to do, the approach we are going to use is the video that circulated on social media, uh, those persons who, uh, you know, place those videos on social media are going to be um, used as persons of interest to assist with the investigation that will lead to arrest of individuals who perpetrated such act uh, thereby leading to the death of our citizens. Okay. So I can assure you that um, in the course of uh, the before the end of week, we we'll definitely continue to provide you updates uh, as it relates to arrest. So on, until now, you 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 you've you've not been able to you know invite over to the police those those persons of interest, or you've not been able to so, identify them to, to invite them. Investi- so our investigators uh, have uh, already started reaching out uh, to you know social media, you know um, you know outreach uh, to be able to have those persons of interest avail themselves to headquarters. Okay, but also the 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 the, the body because it's, it it was alleged that she was beaten, and um I don't know I, I don't know how you do your investigation, but uh don't you think it's going to be prudent if uh, maybe you can your investigation can find out from the body whether from the hospital what she died from? Yeah, so uh, you can rest assured that we we'll keep up with you regularly um, as we make progress with the investigation. And this issue of weight, um, how <laughs> I want to, uh, it, it's funny, but uh, it, does the police investigate uh, issue of search? Somebody be uh, accused of being a witch? Does the police investigate issue of search? You know, um, you know, we uh, our work we do basically has to is not is, is basically empirical. Mm-hmm. We go after empirical evidence and uh, okay. hearsay or DC. You know, so because you you don't take you know hearsay evidence to court, you take empirical evidence to court. So on the basis of that, you know we do not proceed with any case that does not have you know empirical evidence. Oh, okay, okay, Mr. Carter, I'll continue to call you maybe by Friday, Thursday or Friday, hopefully, um, to uh, make more inquiry about that investigation. You are quite welcome. Thank you, Yankee.
Okay, thank you very much. So it's Moses Carter, the uh, spokesperson of the Liberia National Police. They're uh, speaking with us. Well, folks, it's sad that uh, the old man died. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was uh, uh, an online television, the Liberian News Agency um, followed that story to the letter. Um, they went on, interviewed uh, Dixon Park, Park Grand Turk. Um, on where the the woman lived for 10 years. They went there, spoke to individuals in that particular surrounding about the old, uh, about the woman. Um, and people say, I mean, she was a normal, you know, woman living her normal life in that community. Um, you know, uh, her, one of her, her brothers rented a room for her. Uh, and then the brother unfortunately died. But since the brother died, she had been living in that particular community. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, she sells rice. You know, mm -hmm. she sells rice. They, 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 they have a name there for her. They call someone, I, you know, a uh, young star name because um, uh, the residents of the community in the interview said, well, are they taking things for Sepi? The old man too will tell all the things for Sepi. So they used to call her someone, a young girl name, you know, in the community. And uh, she used to sell rice, according to, to them. She used to sell rice. Uh, the old man used to sell rice to survive. You know, but um, I think she fell, according to um, some of the residents, some of her neighbors. She fell, and since she fell, um, her foot got broken. And uh, she couldn't move about all by herself. And out of that, uh, she earlier on had, you know, um, her 16-year-old granddaughter who used to take care of her. But when she became older and there was more work on her to do, the little girl uh, ran away. And so she was there all by herself. She was helped by neighbors. You know, they said she would get outside in the morning and just sit at a particular area and do everything for herself, sending the kids in the yard, you know, from one end to another end to help her uh, with stuff. Until, um, you know, at a certain point in time, they saw that she was she was sick, she was suffering, um, and uh, the neighbors decided to take her to her brother. All right? Um, so they didn't want to take her just directly to her brother. Uh, and say, hey, yeah, yeah, there is a sister, because they thought that the brother might have denied her because of her condition. So what they said, they, when they did a background check, they found the brother's place, and they went there. They said, oh, um, your, 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 because the male who rented the place for the old man, mm -hmm. that's uh, the old man's little brother, and he's also the brother to that papi. So the other one, yeah. So the, the, the papi who the, uh, is alive is the elder brother to the Omar and mm -hmm. the one who also died. Who, who, who died. Now, so they went to the papi. They said, oh, your brother who died left some land, uh, land deal with us. Yeah. And he told us to get away to the family. And we've been checking since then for family. You know, we can't see anything besides the Omar. And we thought the Omar... You know, couldn't have kept it well. So uh, we are we get the land and we want to bring it to you. But you know the Oma here, the Oma that is sister, and that's how he agree. <laughs> <laughs> that's how he, he, he agrees. He said, oh, the Oma that's my sister. The Oma is my sister. So that the people were, they put the Oma in car and they brought the Oma to the papa's house. Uh, and they said, oh, they a land here. <laughs> so the lady now was the Omar. <laughs> so yeah, so the brother Omar to the house. He said, "Oh, that's a lady." Yeah. So when he was, he was like dumbfounded, you know, and he couldn't say anything. He said, "Oh, but yeah, I'm my sister. I, 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 I can't deny her. Oh, I'm my sister." And that's how the the the, the, the Omar had been there in all that, along in that new environment. Yeah, in that new environment. But then it seems, you know, uh. The old man uh, wasn't staying inside of the house where he was because he said he was renting one room inside, inside of the house. 
Um, there's a flower right by the house. Uh, uh, in that flower, because the flower is like a fence. Mm -hmm. So in that flower, you got bags, you got pen. Uh, 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 it, 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 it's, it's like an area where someone has been staying. So according to him, when the brother Omar, you know, after beating her, when they brought her, they just dropped her uh, in that flower. You know, and uh, if you look at the area, those those who were there, uh, according to the Liberian News Agency, Kwame Wiesfu went there. The area was smelling with a lot of urine. So he tells you that somebody has been living well because there's a bag mm -hmm. all there with ET pen and everything. So he tells you that somebody has been um, living there. But then uh, there was a question asked this puppy about what who took the woman because that the woman couldn't move since her foot got broken who took her away who took her from the house and all the way to the road to the road where she was beating yeah where she was beating where she was accused of being a witch and beating who took her from there so when he asked the puppy that question he became very emotional he said he didn't want to talk anything he didn't want to talk anything that they were holding back tomorrow and all mm. of that so he became emotional he said he, he wasn't answering the question you know, so that, uh, you know, facial expression and reaction that he gave, it tells a lot. The reasons on red And flag. also, when they went to the old man's previous neighborhood, um, they spoke with the residents. The residents said that it was alleged that the papi pay people to take the woman away, his sister away. Mm. That's an allegation. That, that's what the neighbors um, from an old resident said. That if I pay, pay people to take the woman away, that he was not able to take care of her and out of that. And so when he took her away, where the place are now on the road is where, you know, um, folks saw her and accused her of being a witch and the flock her mercifully and then she died. So and that's, that's, uh, the story behind yeah, we, this old lady. We just hope that the police will use, uh, quote unquote, the video to do the investigation and uh, have those people who are responsible for her uh, uh, facing the full will of the law because that is one of Liberia's citizens. And you cannot have your citizen being treated in such a way and manner. Uh, it is wrong. So uh, we, we are just hoping that the police will handle this in a sooner possible time to come up with the results of those who allegedly did the act. So that's it. Uh, you can see. Yeah, and the, the police have been very slow in in in, in investigation. I, I do agree with the Esther Freeman because this thing happened like you know early early uh, last week. Uh, it was on a Sunday when the video last Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, last before week Sunday. Now in the even the previous Sunday. Week before last. Yeah, we 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 before last. You know. It happened. And up to this time, the police has not been able to even identify the person who did a video to, you know, um, identify uh, those, that individual to serve as a person of interest, you know, and to go about and arresting people uh, who allegedly flogged the woman. So I think uh, the police has been, has, has done little, mm. you know, to, um, um, when, when it comes to investigating that, that matter. And the old man died, you know, over the weekend. So, I think the police should have done more from that point, uh, you know, to, to carry out their investigation. So, you know, uh, um, do, do more when it comes to investigation, but um, they've been doing little, very, 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 very little. So um, we hope to hear from that, from, from, from them about the, the investigation for us. We are here um, to bring information to the public and also to advocate on behalf of uh, citizens as well so i uh, i hope i uh, this will not repeat itself no uh because it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a for this notion of just seeing somebody and seeing yes. the person is a witch and just in, in between that time um just before that incident uh, there was another incident in Babulu where this delay was set ablaze mm -hmm. you know the two boys said the, the woman ablaze they said she, she wished her the fact she's a witch the accuser of being a witch. So, according to 
uh, our correspondent in this town that the people been, uh, you know, pointing, uh, uh, accusing fingers of the woman of being a witch, that uh, she's the reason why, you know, uh, their children are not progressing in the town and blah, 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 blah. And so um, two young guys decided to go at the bag yes, went to the Oma house, 52 year old woman, went to a house, put her out of the house, sprinkled the gas over her, and then set her ablaze. Mm. And currently, they too, they are on an investigation there in uh, Wapalo County. So we should stop this kind of uh, very cruel acts against our own brothers and sisters. It's very cruel. You don't have evidence that the person is a witch. Even if you have evidence, even maybe there's a video you know, that you have of the person flying and landing, you get that video. Is that a reason that you flock the person to, 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 to death? When you flock, when you beat the person, you know, is, is, is it when the person is going to change or the witchcraft in the person will leave the person? No, it's not going to leave the person. So you just do the right thing by either taking um, the person to the church. If you want the person to repent, if you think the person is a witch, take the person to the church to pray for the person. You know, but folks, that's it. We have to go to the lines now to speak to our our callers. Call us on 0777 Those are the numbers to put you through this morning on the Today Show. Uh, call us just have some chit chat. What have you got to say about all of our training uh issues discussed on the platform here but just before we call please play the spoon 1075 mega daily cash splash all right play the spoon 1075 mega daily cash splash it's a radio game or the raffle draw and it draws up to 20 winners every morning on this show and each winner walks away with 2500 liberian dollars so um to be a part of the draw all you need to do is to dial the plain code, which is star 799 hash. Star 799 hash. Select number three for Spoon FM. And you choose how to pay the plain fee, which is just 70 cents US or 100 uh, Liberian dollars. Once you play, you automatically get into the draw and you stand a chance to win 2,500 Liberian dollars at uh, the end of the show here this morning. So let's go now to our lines to talk to um the colors zero triple seven double seven one zero seven five zero triple five one zero one zero seven five let's talk to this president good morning your name away join us from oh, good morning my dear brother good morning let's hear you my name is Chester mm. and i told you for a long time okay let's hear you regarding the the little i mean the old man that uh, brought out out and little old was first dead that brother to be investigated. Who brother? The brother who he put out the sister, who put his sister out. And then I mean, it, 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 that, that was just an allegation. That that was that was just an allegation. Yeah, but, but I think the brother must be investigated. Yeah, be investigated. he has to be investigated. I do agree. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Thanks for calling. Let's talk to this person. Good morning, your name away, join us from. Uh, okay, let's talk to this other person. Good morning. Yeah, uh, uh, good morning, school. Good morning. Let's hear you. Your name and where you join us from. I am Matthew Green. I'm calling from Johnsonville. Matthew Green. Let's I hear want you. To say, yeah, I want to say thank you very much for a brilliant show last night. It was wonderful. It was educative. I want to say thank you to uh, Daryl DeLong, who has given us the confidence that the Red you train is on your right track. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's talk to another person here. Good morning, your name and where you join us from. <clears throat> My name is Samson Tupacaro Calling Foundation number four. Things you well like. Okay, let's hear you, Samson. Uh <clears throat> my my attention has been drawn to Mayor Summer Mayor Javati Kochi. Okay. Uh, mayor is a person that wants to create chaos in the country. But it will never happen by the grace of God. Mm. Because he tried to inspire the youth, the youth of CDC, because he did, 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 he did
and kill our people. So if President or, 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 or we are king, former President, we are king, the people for the EPA, what is intention? Nobody is hunting anybody in life because of what is fighting war yet. According to President Weir, the former president, he said that everybody should buy CCTV. And we or so other Trump people cannot uh, 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 so that in purple red or green for them to keep. And all the stuff that are in the process, he said people, people should buy CCTV to see that who security. And at that time, the city basin board were missing. And at that time, the CEPF, one of the EPF became a brother, our brother, our brother, okay, in the country toward the Nima. Mm. 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 So all of, all of the thing is a rally. Nobody holding anybody, even President Waka can work for us or a way that everybody will harm me. Or, 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 or President Ria is being with us. He's a former president, he's a popular football outcome. He can work for us. Anywhere you want to go, nobody how much is. Why is it that you request it for 38 EPS? God needs to be looked at thoroughly and investigated. Thank you. For the opportunity. Thank you very much for calling. Let's take it. Uh, Denji, welcome. Long time. Uh, good morning, JLG. Thank you for the recognition. Good morning to Imaya Fire TV Institute. Uh, for the sake of the Labrador people, my name is Denji Ta. I ask for every Basel Rapper for Guadal City. No, the JLG has been on a tough time for me. They feel more like just back. Okay. Uh, that that there's the whole kind of issue where a lady come on the stage. She said, "Well, we're starting the lane for all him. We're not living in a school building. Okay. It has a it has a issue too. Yeah, my brother to the point. You know, this place our own and uh, we know where we can go apart from the place. Uh, the issue here for Liberian Liberian always focus on quality and they get focus on why we benefit or why we unite the country. The issue here for the old lady was built on the highway. So to be friends with you, this this only day when I was in our government with future children or when I was studying group of party people, you know, all of women group of can or a protest and me a lot of uh you know concern about this. But because like people and she now have no uh uh question or party or or mm. what have you but my question is those people that were recording this view. In a case that the, that the, that the police also protest and trace the people that are saying will be uh, shown in this video and those that are recording this video, mm. they can be a question and because if you are on the scene recording somebody and what is happening other people, I think that time that you are taking to record or to add a camera, you can use that time to call to enter the jail that police station you know, to intervene. But you just okay. a report of view that are going why and why they they they, they kill somebody in the wrong. Thank you, thank you, Jenge Ta. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Let's talk to this other person. I'm sorry, we can't continue with you. You have to walk away from the radio before calling us. Zero triple seven double seven one zero seven five. Oh my God. Okay. So you walk away from your radio before you call us, please. Walk away from the radio before calling us. We wouldn't answer your call if you are by your radio. Let's talk to this person. Good morning. Good morning. I'm okay. Your name and where you join us from? My name is Jacob. What is my marshal? Jacob, bless you. How are you? Yeah, my man. You for me, I just wanted to ask questions of you. And I will bless you that we are just discussing to you. So I just wanted to ask the specialist for the nation, Joseph Father. So I have traditional legal encounters with the council in Rowa. Why? They can't just, they, they, they can't just meet? Yes, they can't just meet. But they can't just meet coming up in April. April 14th, it, 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 it's going to, it, it will begin. So, okay, it wasn't cancer. Thank you. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, 0 777 one zero one zero seven five callers uh let's have some chit chat here what have you got to say about uh all of the trending issues we've uh, talked about and also play the spoon 1075 mega dedicated splashes or radio game or the rougher draw and it draws up to 20 persons here every morning on the show and each person walks away with uh, 2500 librarian dollars all you need to do to form part of the draw is uh you take your your phone using your non star cell GSM SIM card, dial the playing code star 799 hatch. You select number three 
for Spoon FM. And after that, you choose how to pay the playing fee through your mobile money account or through your airtime. Um, and then you, once you do that, you automatically enter the draw. The playing fee is just 70 cents uh, US or uh, 100 Liberian dollars. So once you do that, you automatically enter the draw. Let's go back to the lines. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's hear you. Good morning. Okay, this person, are you really? Uh, hello, your name, where are you joining us from? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, let's morning. talk to another person. Your background is noisy. Good morning, let's hear you. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, let's hear you. Yeah, I'm betting to discuss the critical for each day. I hope the critical yeah, issue is, is one of... Hello? The zero schools in Morovia, media, the private schools. Okay, so we're not discussing schools this morning, yeah? Mm? Uh, let's stick to our talking points. Yeah, let's stick to our talking points. So we talk about various issues here this, here this morning. We talk about... The President Executive Order 127 exempting the LSWC, that is the Liberal uh, Water and Sea World uh, Corporation, that is the LWSC, um, you know, from custom duties. Um, certain actims being imported uh, by the uh, Water and Sea World Corporation from custom duty. We'll talk about um, the Information Minister um, uh, reaction or uh, response to President George Weah's request. For 38 um, security uh, officers, uh, EPS uh, officers, uh, we, we talk about you know um, the death of uh, the old woman who was accused of witch and beaten in Chocolate City. She was hospitalized and later died. Uh, those are issues we're talking about. So let's uh, kind of stick to those issues. Good morning, your name, where you join us from? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's hear you. Yeah, my name is Thomas M. Kroman. I call from Bellevue this morning. Okay. My attention, yeah, my attention has been drawn to this to this old lady that was flogged. So mm -hmm. the question is, where are the Liberian women who stood yesterday for other women out there? Is it because she was not a young person and somebody wanted to police that since one year? Where are they? Where are the women that where she resided yesterday? Why are they not coming up? Why are they not coming up asking for justice? Asking for speedy for for, for speedy uh, uh, hardcore investigation? Where are the women? That's a good question. A very, very good question. Yeah, why, why are they? Be, I mean, they should be. be why are the various be, women organization in this country? Yeah, just yeah, should be shared for everybody. Not only because somebody is very young, and maybe you think you can produce that things around here, and you can use that thing in tomorrow to run out there for for for, for turn up position. Where are the women? So they have to stand up asking for justice. Thank, Thank you. This morning. Thank you very much. Uh, let's talk to this person. Good morning, your name and where you join us from. Good morning. Good morning. Are you there? Okay. Uh, that person dropped the line. Let's talk to this other person. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm okay. Let's hear you. I'm uh, trying to a complex. Okay. Go ahead. Because You've I been following the show. The killing in Liberia. Yeah. If you kill somebody, let them kill you. Then you not. Then nobody will be oh, they will stay in public to kill somebody. But while people kill, they will look at them and go free. They will be walking around and be saying all the things freely. So if you kill, let him kill you in the spot. Okay. That's that's your recommendation. But uh, I see that not, not, not being, you know, uh, easily possible in Liberia, as Liberia has signed into several internet, onto several international treaties um, that has to do with human rights. So I'm not sure that, you know, um, you know, um, our law, our law will call for that because it's going to be against um, those international treaties that we've signed. Uh, let's talk to this person. Go, good morning. Hello, are you there? Yeah, good morning. Let's hear you. I'm Cyrus Adu, morning from Pinsu City. Cyrus, let's hear you. Yeah, firstly, I got to do with the EPA issue. Like our ex president, President Joseph Telly, when she was giving 15 EPS and eight work away on their own, she didn't remember the government saying that they should increase the EPS number. And our president, killed, our ex president, George, president, George Weah, said that they should give 15 assets. 
and the Jews say they will deny it, and now he is coming back asking for the egg. So what is the intention? They should really ask him why he's saying it, or what happened to him, or who are harming people, or try to harm him. Secondly, they got to do with a woman who was beating and killed. People say she was rich. Are they wish wonder or they are wish wonder in Liberia now? If they are wish wonder, then let 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 us know that they are wish wonder. Thank you for the platform. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your points. Let's uh, uh, talk to another person here. Hello, your name and where? You? Okay, we lost that person. Um, yeah, I I do agree with you, Joseph Tama. I do agree with you. Uh, we we um, try doing that here, uh, but it's just that. Uh, we can be focused doing other things at the same time. Yeah, uh, but I do agree with you. But folks, keep on playing the Spoon 1075 uh, Mega Dedicate Splash. Um, it's on. Uh, a few minutes from now, we'll be drawing our winners. 20 persons will be walking away with 2,500 Liberian dollars right here. And the procedure is you dial the playing code star 799 hatch. You select number three for Spoon FM and you choose how to pay the playing fee using your non star cell mobile money um, or your airtime. Uh, so um, you can go in and buy the scratch card for you. If you're using your airtime, go you buy the scratch card one dollar, two dollars, add the video on your phone and you play. Uh, if you have money on your mobile money, LD or USD account. Well, you can also use that to play. You can play multiple times as much as you want because um, it's a rapid draw. And so the more you play, the more your chances are to win. So play in uh, a few minutes from now, we'll be drawing um, our winners. Uh, yeah, so uh, that is it. That, that, that is it right here. Uh, the Today Show on Spoon, we're still taking calls. 0 1075 Zero triple five one zero one zero seven five. We're also coming to you live on soup. Uh, sorry, fabric, fabric one hundred one point one, and we live on Spawn TV, uh, fabric TV as well. All right, let's talk to this person. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Let's hear you. Good morning, Good morning to Emmanuel David. Good morning. Let's hear you. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Yadezi, uh, for. To ask about this topic, but you see, the you know, when I listen to the the, the information uh, minister, mm. I mean, the request from the from the from the former president to have 38 EPA officer is sound laughable. And let me tell you, guys, Jamaica does not really want 38 EPA officer. But what he's trying to do is that he's doing that to bring distraction, you know, to distract the the the. the the developmental mind of, of the of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the present government, but you see that is that is that is real, that is realistic. So, are we at war before you, before you want to request for the APP officer? Have your home being attacked? Have your car being attacked in the street? Or have any of your your, your former ministers or your former cabinet are they uh, found report to you that their their, their, their life is at, at, at risk? So there's nothing that is here. During the day, you still want to, to, to have CCTV camera. So I think what I will advise is that, but when we are, if, you, if you want more security, can you kind of go and purchase 38 pieces of CCTV camera and install it wherever you want to install it? I think with that, it will be very much protected for you. Thank I think you. the first thing the, the, the president did was to, to, to give you security. Thank you. I have own will. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's talk to this other person. Good morning. Uh, good morning. How are you? Let's hear you. I'm the, my name is Alex Elsuko, I call for uh, Johnson Day Comrade Day. Alex, let's hear you. Uh, concerning the crime of murder, if somebody having to kill, I'm probably I'm a Christian, but I will make it clear in the book of Exodus chapter 21, 12. You see, he does not a man so that he die, shall be surely put to death. The scripture make it understand once somebody having to kill another person by taking the person life. But I say persons should not be set free. They should be killed as well. They are created in the image of our creator, which is God Almighty. Uh, another man taking a person life, that same person should, should be killed. I, well, in a way, we post stop to bring society. That is the only way people will be free 
But when the man kill, he said that go to court. The man go big law. Sometimes he said that the man for ten years, twelve years, or sometimes less than that. The man can fight this fool out of family. They they are grieved, crying. Okay. The person kill it, kill the person. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for calling. That's your opinion, and you are entitled to it. But like I said. Uh, Liberia uh, is a signatory to a lot of uh, international, you know, human rights treaties. So I'm, I'm not sure that it's going to happen um, easily. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, talk to more individuals here. Uh, but just before um, going to the line, uh, on yesterday at Mika's press briefing, um, uh, the foreign minister, uh, Sarah Beslo Yanti, mandated everyone holding diplomatic passports to immediately return those diplomatic passports beginning today today march 19. so if you are in possession of diplomatic passports um the foreign minister is uh, saying that you should begin returning your diplomatic passports as of today hmm? and she said if anyone refuses to return his or diplomatic passports on or before april 25 2024 so the deadline is uh april 25 2024 you have a little a little over a month to return um your diplomatic passports so if you don't return it um, after the April 25, 2024 deadline, the passports will be considered invalid or be denied usage anyway. Huh? And uh, yeah, I think that's uh, a, a good decision uh, from uh, the foreign minister. Um, uh, she said the decision is, uh, is because... You know, they didn't get any record of how many people carry Liberia diplomatic passport and who are those in possession of the passports. Yeah. She said there's no record, no record at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs regarding um, the number of individuals that are in possession of uh, diplomatic passports in the country. And uh, um, don't even know the, the the identities of those that are possessing those uh, diplomatic passports. So if when you return your diplomatic passports, um, then now um, they can have a record. If you are a legitimate person to you know uh, possess a diplomatic passport, that's okay. You can use it. But um, there are a lot of people out there who are wrongfully in possession of diplomatic passports they're passing around with it you know going places is giving them you know uh, a privilege to sit to go places um uh, to be treated like vrps uh, which of course they they are in one so i think the decision was key and uh following this decision the u.s embassy um posted this statement uh and said uh, the U.S. Embassy welcomes the latest measure taken by the government of Liberia to ensure all diplomatic officials and uh, service passport holders meet official eligibility requirements. The foreign minister's commitment to address the issue of fraudulent travel documents, that's travel documents, advances not just Liberia national security, but that of the international community. Thank you, Foreign Minister uh, Sarah Beslo Yanti. That's a statement from the U.S. Embassy near Monrovia, commending uh, the Foreign Minister for uh, the decision taken. And also, um, we heard about the resignation of uh, a steward of the former ruling coalition for democratic change dr lester tenney uh, he's resigned uh, and in his resignation letter uh, he said he finds it completely disingenuous 
Yeah, that's what he said. At this time, he's finding it disingenuous. He said he find it very, very disingenuous to cohabit and coexist in an organization like the CDC, where thieves, national resources, looters, and murderers of Liberians exist. So Lester Tenney is now uh, saying that CDC is an organization where thieves and uh, national resources, looters, and murderers of Liberians exist. So because of that, he is resigned. But that is not a surprise. Uh, um, it would have been a surprise if CDC had won the election and then we see Lester turning, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> resigning and calling the CDC, you know, uh, uh, using all of the adjectives in his music currently. But that, that's, that's not a surprise. That, that's not a surprise. But folks, it's 56 minutes on the flip side of uh, uh, now o'clock. We have to go home. We have to go home. But before going home, uh, yeah, before going home, we need to draw our winners here, and that is exactly what I'm about to do. Uh, for those of you who play the Spoon 1075 Mega Data Cast Splash, it's time um, to draw our winners. Yep, uh, 20 persons here walking away with uh, 2500 Liberian dollars. So, um, these are uh, the winners, uh, the rest of the draw will be done by my colleague here, Emmanuel David. So now, the first winner, the three last digits of your number uh, are 905. 905 are the three last digits of your number. Uh, the second winner, the three last digits of your number uh nine nine seven nine nine seven the fourth winner the three last digits of your number are seven two four seven two four the fifth winner the three last digits of your number i i four four seven four four seven yeah so if you play the game and uh, your number ends in those uh, last digits I just read, those five last digits I, I just read, of course, you are walking away with 15 USD. All is equivalent in Liberian dollars. So congratulations to all of the winners. We wouldn't call the winners here this morning because of time. We'd like to say thanks to all of you um, for affording the show. The rest of the draw um, is, is, is currently being, being done. Um, so, um, yes, uh, before 10 o'clock, a minute from now, everything will be done with. And, of course, uh, congratulations to all of you who win, you know, today. And if you didn't win, keep on playing. Uh, the draw will be open at 12 o'clock this afternoon on the Spoon Kitchen. Yes, you can also play on the Spoon Kitchen this afternoon. Or better still, DJ SNW will be here this afternoon uh, by 3 o'clock. Uh, when the job will be open again. I better say, join us tomorrow morning. We'll be here um, to afford you the opportunity to play. My name is Yekezi Zobel. I've been here alongside my colleague. Another edition of the Today Show comes on tomorrow at the same time. Um, um, uh, please invite someone to listen up tomorrow because, as usual, the show promises to be very interesting. I'd like to say thanks to our television viewers. Thanks for your comments and everything. Uh, Joseph Tamba, Ruth, uh, Ruth Gordon, uh, thanks for following. Uh, yeah, I, I don't want to call this name because uh, they're doing something else. So, Keria and Keria Ush, thanks for following. I hope I got the pronunciation of the name right. Nathan Banagt, thanks for following, and thanks to all, all of you for following the show this morning. Again, I'm Yekezi, bidding you a pleasant goodbye from Odious Congo Town in Minerva, Liberia. Bye-bye.